Hello, my name is Ian Kilpatrick. I'm the headmaster here at SIGCOT, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our open event. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are staying safe. And although not, we're not able to meet together personally, I hope that this will give you an opportunity to really find out a little bit of what makes SIDCOT unique and special. And you'll do that from a number of my colleagues, but also from some parents and from some students. We're hoping that we can make this as interactive an opportunity as possible. And to allow that to happen, we have organized what we're calling breakout sessions. And this will be a chance for you to go into small groups and have a discussion with particular colleagues and particular members of staff. These are going to take place as follows. The first session begins at 10 a.m. UK time and is for those interested in finding out more about sixth form at SIDCOT. You'll hear from the head of upper school, Tom Ruddle, and some of our sixth form students. The second session begins at 11 a.m. and is for those interested in boarding. You can join our deputy head pastoral, Joanna Leite, and our head of boarding, Amandine Smilovich, and some of our boarding students to find out what boarding at Sidcot is all about. At 12 noon, you can hear from our deputy head academic, Christian Hughes, and our academic enrichment coordinator, Claire Winchester-Snell, who will discuss academic excellence and how we maximise our students' potential and provide stretch for our high achievers. At 1.30pm we have a session focused on the arts and technology. Creativity is hugely important at SIGCOT and our Assistant Head for Teaching and Learning, Charlotte Rezugan, will be joined by our Head of Art, Joanna Egan, and Head of Design and Technology, Gemma Chapman, to, to discuss everything from art, music and drama to product design, computing, food technology and textiles. Our final session is at 2.30pm. I will be joining Matt Lloyd, our Director of Sport, to discuss our PE and Games programme and the range of sports and activities available to our students. So please do feel free to join any of these sessions by clicking the relevant link on the web page you've been provided. Now, you don't need me to tell you that we live in interesting and challenging times. And education is not just about what we're doing now, it's also what we're going to do in the future. And this is very important to us here at SIDCOT. We see our job not just as dealing with the day-to-day, -day, but actually putting our young people in a position where they feel confident to take on all the challenges that they will face in their life beyond school. You may be aware that we are a Quaker school, and indeed the school was founded by Quakers in 1699. When it was re-established on this site that I'm broadcasting from today in 1808, it was the first co-educational boarding school in England. And that really spoke to one of the main principles of equality that the Quakers believed in. They felt that all people were equal and that the best way to make the world a more equal place was for both boys and girls to have the same access to education. So you can imagine at the start of the 19th century, that was very progressive. And I like to think that some of that pioneering spirit is still very much alive with us today here at SIGCOT and very much part of the experience that our young people enjoy. IQ is important, but EQ, emotional intelligence, is absolutely vital. And it's something that informs our teaching and indeed our way of life here at SIGCOT. We want our young people when they leave to be empathetic, to be self-aware, resilient, adaptable, able to collaborate, but also to have that sense of challenging orthodoxy, of seeing the world as it could be, rather than merely accepting it as it is. Apart, perhaps apart from everything else, Sidcot is about people and it's about relationships. And the early Quakers were instructed to walk cheerfully over the world, answering that of God in everyone. And today, whether you accept that as being that of God or that of good really makes no difference. The important thing is how we see each other and how we greet each other. And we like to think that at Sidcot, we do so with cheerfulness, with humour and without any cynicism. So that who you are is what really matters. I hope you're going to enjoy the rest of the tour. I hope that you're going to enjoy your time with us and learn out a little bit more about what I think makes Sidcot such an interesting place, not just to work, but also to live. I'd like to thank you for joining us. I'd like to invite you to the breakout sessions that I talked about earlier. And I'm going to leave you now 
with a virtual tour of the school so that you can get a sense for yourself of just what our, our space and facilities are like. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and I hope you stay safe and well until we can meet face to face. Hello, my name is Ian Kilpatrick, I'm Headmaster here at SIGCOT and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual tour of the school. And we're standing in front of the main school building which dates back to 1808. We're very fortunate to be in such a beautiful part of the southwest of England here in the Mendips and our natural environment is a wonderful backdrop not just for our teaching and learning but for all the other activities that take place at school. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you're going to enjoy the tour. Now it's time to take a look inside the main school building. The hub is at the heart of the school. It's a student common room and coffee shop. It's open at break times, lunch times and in the evening, offering a comfortable space for students to relax and socialise. Here is a refectory where all our meals are served. All food is prepared on site and wherever possible is organic and locally sourced. Our catering team work hard to provide our students with an amazing choice of meals every day to make sure we can cater for all our students' tastes and dietary requirements. The school library offers students all the resources they need to assist their studies. A librarian is on duty all day to support students with their research. It's a quiet space where many students will choose to study. Upstairs is the sixth form quiet study area. Outside the main school building, you'll find the Quaker Meeting House. Sidcot is a Quaker school and was established on the principles of truth, integrity, respect, simplicity, equality, and sustainability. These values, or testimonies, are fundamental to how the school operates. The Quaker Meeting House provides a place where our students meet together once a week to share 20 minutes of quiet, calm reflection. It's also where our assemblies, concerts, and many of our school productions take place. This is Sidcot's dedicated science block where the large labs provide all the equipment to ensure, whenever possible, our lessons are practical rather than theoretical. To further develop our students' interest in the sciences, teachers will often take their lessons out of the classroom, making use of the school's extensive grounds or on a range of trips. These including visits to local universities and businesses, where students can see how the different scientific disciplines are applied outside of the school environment. The school is even equipped with its own observatory, giving our students a fantastic opportunity to explore the night sky. Students at Sidcot study four areas of design and technology consisting of textiles, food technology, product design and computing. This is the product design room, which gives our students the opportunity to explore a range of materials using both modern and traditional manufacturing methods. Students make use of outstanding facilities including 3D printing, laser cutting, electronics and metalworking facilities to develop their designs from concept through to finished product. Our dedicated textiles room allows students to express their creativity through a range of techniques including printing, embroidery, pattern cutting, all the way through to full garment production. This culminates each year with a fashion show demonstrating the students' incredible work. The food technology kitchens provide all the facilities to equip students with an array of culinary techniques and a solid understanding of food science, nutrition and food provenance. Here is one of our computing labs, which provides our students with access to the latest hardware and software. In fact, in the senior school, much of the students' work is paperless, with homework submitted and assessed online. Sidcot's art provision is internationally recognised and here you'll find our Art Centre. The Art Centre is a work of art in itself, beautifully designed with three main areas for visual arts, dramatic arts and music. Here you can see a fine art class. This is the 3D art room with facilities for ceramics including our own kiln to fire students' work. This is the digital art room with all the latest technologies allowing students to explore the creative process. Students can study photography and experiment with both digital and traditional photography, making use of our darkroom. Drama is an important part of our offer. 
We believe it helps students to build a range of skills, including confidence and public speaking. Here is our drama studio, which has a capacity of over 100 and all the latest lighting and audio technology. This is the music department's dedicated concert hall. It's acoustically designed for performances and sits alongside the school's recording studio, allowing students to record and edit their work. Students can undertake one-to-one -one lessons in almost any instrument and can get involved in one of our many choirs, bands and orchestras. Sidcot is blessed with some outstanding sporting facilities. The indoor sports hall provides a wide range of indoor activities from fencing to gymnastics. Our 25 metre indoor swimming pool offers students the opportunity to join our swimming team or just a place to enjoy their evenings and weekends. The gym and studio provide a full range of cardio and resistance machines for strength and conditioning. Our all-weather sports pitches are a state-of-the-art facility for students to practice and play hockey, football and rugby, whatever the weather. Our playing fields provide the space for all students to take part in competitive fixtures including athletics, rounders and netball to name a few. The school's countryside location means we're lucky enough to have an on-site riding centre. Students can bring their own horses to the school and ride conveniently on the school's 150 acres of land. The equestrian centre offers 24 stables and a 40 metre by 30 metre floodlit arena full-time grooms and dressage and show jumping facilities. Riding lessons are available for students at any level of ability. Sidcot is blessed with beautiful outside spaces and we make every effort to make the most of our surroundings. Our outdoor learning coordinator ensures Sidcot students have plenty of opportunities to enjoy the great outdoors. This outdoor learning takes many forms with lessons being taught in our outdoor spaces and a diverse range of extracurricular activities. The facilities on our 150-acre campus include our yurts, forest school, Iron Age mud hut, fire pit, amphitheatre, allotments, outside classrooms and even our observatory. Sidcot students will be taught bushcraft skills and will take part in orienteering exercises as well as learning to grow fruit and veg in the allotment. After school, students will have the chance to participate in adventurous activities like Caving Club and many of our students take part in the Duke of Edinburgh's award. The Junior School is where students from nursery up to Year 6 are taught. It sits within the Senior School campus so enjoys the best of both worlds. Dedicated facilities specially designed to provide the perfect environment for younger children while maintaining access to facilities like the swimming pool and refectory in the Senior School. Sidcot has four boarding houses that cater for students from Year 7 up to 6th form. While each house is different, they all have a comfortable common room with TV, DVD and games console, Wi-Fi and a student's kitchen. A housemaster or housemistress is responsible for looking after the student's welfare and ensuring that life in the house is a good humoured experience that students will look back on with fondness. Above everything else, these houses are homes places to relax and socialise and share experiences. The last stop on our tour is the Old Library, a space we use for a range of different meetings and gatherings. I hope you enjoyed this virtual tour of the school. It's been my pleasure to host you through it. However, I would be delighted to meet you in person and give you an opportunity to see the school for itself in the not too distant future. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, it's lovely to be with you today, or be not in person. My name is Christian Hughes and it's my great privilege to be the Deputy Head Academic here at Sidcot School. As such, my key role is to ensure that as a school we maintain the highest standards of teaching and learning and therefore academic achievement across the whole school and curriculum. We are committed to ensuring that every student, regardless of their ability, has an equal opportunity to maximise their full potential both in and out of the classroom. We do this by ensuring that our students experience a broad range of innovative teaching and learning styles that excite and increase engagement with the curriculum, thereby 
developing a lifelong love of learning that will stand them in good stead as they progress along their learning and career pathways beyond Sidcot. With regards to our different courses in the senior school, unlike some other schools, we keep the curriculum as broad as possible for as long as possible. In years seven, eight and nine, we keep options open, only asking our students to make choices once they start GCSE courses in year 10. Our offer in the sixth form is also diverse. And I'm really pleased that our students are able to progress along three different curriculum routes to university education and employment. Students may choose to study A-levels as the traditional route to university. These courses certainly stretch the most able and allow our students to embark upon specialised study of their chosen subjects. Or, alternatively, they may choose to take the International Baccalaureate Diploma, or IB, which provides an excellent alternative for those wishing to study an even broader curriculum. There is no question that the ethos of the IB, with its broad curriculum, an emphasis on study skills, community service and internationalism is a great fit with our Quaker values here at Sidcot. In the IB, students study six subjects, three at high level and three at standard level, with the organisation of subject choices ensuring they maintain a breadth of study across English, mathematics, science, humanities, languages and arts. And the final option for our students in the sixth form is they may choose to study a, a level three BTEC diploma in either sport or business studies. These are career-based qualifications and are equivalent to two A-levels each. They're designed to give students the practical skills and specialist knowledge they need to progress along their chosen career path. BTEC diplomas are vocational qualifications that provide specialist work-related learning in a range of sectors. All three of these study options in the sixth form, that's the A-level, the IB and BTEC, provide progression routes to study at university. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you something about our unique approach to teaching and learning here at Sidcot. It's one that enables our students to achieve the excellent academic results I will share with you shortly. This approach is best represented by our innovative whole school curriculum model called the Sidcot Learning Wheel. We are now going to play a brief video clip that tells you more about the principles of our learning wheel and how we use it in our everyday lives at school. Hope and imagination are the two most important qualities for children today. Hope so that they can change the world for the better and imagination so that they can find ways to do so. At Sidcot, we live and learn adventurously, developing these qualities with a profound sense of purpose and respect for the individual and the world around us. We believe that education is so much more than learning facts and figures. It should develop character, encourage empathy, and enable students to realize their dreams. That's why we developed the Sidcot Learning Wheel, our way of putting as much emphasis on developing skills as acquiring knowledge. We use it every day, in every classroom, you will learn what really matters. We'll inspire you to reach your academic potential while also developing lifelong skills. This will help you become a change maker who sees the world as it is and has the imagination, skills and qualities to make it what it could be. We will nurture your curiosity. We question and formulate. We debate and discuss. We link subjects together. We use our math skills in geography. We apply a creative eye to our scientific inquiry. It helps us see the whole picture. Collaboration is key. We work together to problem solve and create. We listen to understand. We develop empathy and kindness through working together. We celebrate everyone for who they are. We love being part of an international community. Whether it's outdoor learning, performing at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, caving in the local hills, sharpening our debating skills, or taking care of the world around us. We have endless opportunities to really enjoy learning both now and in the future. The world is an exciting and quickly changing place. At Sidcot, we're dedicated to making sure you're ready in body, mind and spirit for what lies ahead. If you're ready to live adventurously and learn to make a difference, contact us today. 
Welcome back. I hope that gave you a good insight into how we work with our students to enable them to live adventurously whilst learning to make a difference. We believe that it's the inventive approach coupled with our expertise in preparing students for public exams that has secured the many successes of our students. These can be appreciated by consideration of the outstanding results they achieve at GCSE, A-level and IB. The image that you can see on screen provides a summary of our students' academic performance in the summer of 2020. At A-level, our overall pass rate was 100%, and I'm absolutely delighted that 15% of our A-level entries were awarded the highest grade of A-star. A fantastic achievement, I'm sure you'll agree. As you can imagine, we were also thrilled that a third of the A-level grades awarded were either A-star or A whilst our percentage of grades achieved at C and above was 84%. As you can see, these great results represent a very strong performance across all subjects at A-level. We were also particularly pleased by the success of our students who took A-level further maths, where all of the students achieved the top grade of A-star in this very demanding subject. In the IB, all of our students were awarded the diploma, achieving an average score of 33.7, which is comfortably above the world average score. I'm also incredibly proud that one of our IB students achieved an amazing score of 44 out of 45 points, placing them in the top 500 students taking the IB worldwide. This fantastic achievement equates to around five A stars at A level. And it's not a one-off. Last year, one of our IB students achieved a maximum of 45 marks, another remarkable performance. And I'm also delighted to tell you that this student is now studying natural sciences at Oxford University. Moving on to the BTEC in sport, once again our students achieved a 100% pass rate with 60% achieving a merit or higher, with our top performer doing brilliantly by achieving the highest possible grades of double distinction. The final sixth form qualification to consider is one that is highly valued by university admissions tutors alongside A-levels, IB or BTEC, and that is the EPQ, or Extended Project Qualification. Along with the universities, we also love the EPQ here at Sidcot, as it gives every student the opportunity to produce a piece of work that is truly individual, whether it's a written research report, an event, or a creative artefact. We are very proud that 100% of our EPQ students obtain strong passes with 40% of them achieving an A or A star. Building on this success in the EPQ, I'm also delighted to share with you the EPQ results for our current upper six students that have just been released hot off the press today. 60% of our EPQ students achieved an A or A star grade. This is a phenomenal result and one which will greatly support these students' applications to universities. The great success of our sixth form students is also represented by the fact that 96% of our university applicants gained a place at their first choice of university, with 43% gaining a place at one of the top UK Russell Group universities. And finally, with regard to results last summer, at GCSE, our pass rate was once again 100%, with a remarkable 46% of grades being awarded at 9 to 7, or A star A in old money if you like. Moreover, 95% of GCSE grades awarded were at grade 4 and above, equivalent to the old grade C and above. All in all, I believe that these outstanding results provide a very clear indication of the academic successes that SIDCOT students can expect to achieve which put them in a very strong position when they are making their future education and careers choices. Okay, that's everything from me. I hope I've given you a clearer understanding of what we offer academically here at Sidcot School. We are of course available to answer any questions you may have and the admissions team would be happy to put you in touch with any of our subject specialists if you have a question that relates specifically to a certain subject. Okay. I'd now like to hand you over to some of our students so you can hear a bit more from them about what life at Sidcot is really like. Thank you.
I chose Sid Cop because they don't have a set mold which you have to fit. You can be who you want, really. I chose Sid Cop because I just liked that there were smaller classes and it felt like a friendlier community to enter into. I really liked all the people and all the teachers. It was really friendly. Just the facilities that they had and the how the academic side was so much different to any other school I've ever been to. Everyone's just like one big family. I don't really know if that makes sense, but like everyone's just sort of, you kind of know everyone. What made Sidcot the right school for us was that it's quite an all-rounded school. It's not really just focused on one thing. I also loved how it was in the countryside and there was a load of open space. And that is probably one of the main reasons why I went to Sidcot. Um, I think Sidcot is different because there are so many unique things that it has going on. It's quite independent. You have to kind of do your own thing and keep yourself on track. Every other school I've been to is sort of forcing you to learn, um, but Sidcot it takes it a lot slower. We all do sort of equal amount of work and uh, it's quite a lot of independent learning. The classes are a lot smaller. At my old school there was about 35 people per class, whereas here there's about 15. You get to know the people properly and you get to make new connections with new people. So at my last school, uh, the year year groups were quite separate. When I came on my taste day, everyone was kind of, you know, mixing and hanging out together. I really liked definitely the range of abilities they had and all the, from sports all the way to drama. So when I moved from my old school to Sidcot, it was in year eight, which wasn't a very common year to move in. So I, I think there were maybe three of us who joined in my year and Sidcot just made it really easy. I was um, given a kind of buddy in my tutor group and most of my classes who helped me and showed me around. I came in in year seven, which is the, the main year that people usually come in, pretty much half the year was coming from outside of Sidcot and then the other half was coming from the junior school. The first day I was really nervous, I was shaking and the head boy who was on my bus at the time turned to me and said welcome to Sidcot and gave me a fist pump. After the first couple of days and like making friends I like started joining more clubs and getting into things a lot more because and I've definitely become a lot more confident from that because I, I barely talked in primary school. Yeah, I felt really welcomed. I really enjoyed my first day and the rest of the days. It was just a brilliant experience and still is. My favourite thing about the teachers at Sidcut is because it's such a small environment, everyone knows your name and they know you personally, so they can help you with what they think is best for you. They don't just talk at us the whole time, which can be quite Boring. They always like, we play like games to keep us involved. It does definitely help with, um, you know, the whatever we've learned that day sticking in our minds. Everyone's quite talkative in my class. So we do have things like debates and arguments. They prepare us more for life than for the exams as such. It's like um, the slogan of, you're not, we're not just an exam factory. definitely English. I just find it so interesting and I think that what's different about some other schools is they take more advantage of being able to choose which books you study. So you study more interesting texts that you actually want to be reading. I quite, I quite like all the lessons, you know, there's not one lesson that I absolutely hate. In my old school I hated maths. I would never even, I would never even talk about maths but I went into my first maths lesson and I loved it straight away from then on because of the way they taught the lesson. Languages now as well, so I take German and German's really fun. Well, I'm really interested in animals, so biology is really fun and all the dissecting of the animals I find weirdly fun. I, I really like science and out of the sciences, physics would be my favourite. Although it's really hard, it's also a challenge which I really like about it. We make use of the fields that we have and we just, we either go on walks or 
we make a campfire. You can take your classes outside in lots of different ways. There's PASS, which happens every Wednesday afternoon, which is just a range of different activities that are completely not academic or related to any of your subjects, just for your personal growth. There's an allotment, which is actually, it's really nice. I remember in a couple of PASS sessions last year, um, we used to go out to the allotment and we would get to plant potatoes and peas and stuff. In, in my old school we didn't do much extracurricular activities but they, you had, SIGCOT had so much more opportunities. So outside of school hours from about four till five there are certain clubs that you can sign up for. I love doing sport, I do netball and cross country a lot. The field and the astroturfs, uh, the 3G, all the um, sporting equipment they have, it's a lot more than I've ever used before. There's so much stuff on off the, at the sports centre. There's a big pool if you like swimming and then there's fitness studios and gyms and then the main sports hall. Outside of the sports centre there's also the equestrian centre which is great for riders and Sikot's a really good riding school and playing fields just across the road which is so great because they're so close by. I think a Quaker school does have a different environment because obviously there's the meeting for worship every Friday which is something to get used to but definitely a really nice calming experience. It's, it's on a Friday and you just sort of sit in silence and contemplate for about 20 minutes or half an hour. At first thought I thought this is not my cup of tea at all but I've really taken it on board and it really helps you think outside the box and makes you think a lot more deeply about things. I find it helpful because obviously a full school day and for after weeks and weeks and weeks without having time to just like sit and think about like how the week's been like what you're going to do next week you just kind of sit in silence and let your mind talk to you <laughs> some of the values Sigcott teaches us as a Quaker school is kindness and thoughtfulness I think all the Quaker values are kind of demonstrated all the time whether it's in the classroom outside the classroom you can kind of demonstrate them anywhere it's a really good option to board because uh, you're in school you make your best friends in boarding because you're seeing them every night and in school we have a quiet time from about 6 45 7 to 7 45 ish and then after that it's kind of quite free until you have to sign in and you can make food basically whenever you want. In boarding, I'm definitely picking up some independent skills. Definitely time management is, a, is something that you learn in boarding. Also, just the basics, you know, making your beds. I suppose it will be really good to set you up for later life. Fun, definitely. Definitely creative. Welcoming. Friendly. Learning. Unique. Caring. Equality. Gentle. Relaxed. Supportive. Community. It's really confident. Friendship. Thoughtful. Free. Hello and lovely to meet you. My name's Joanna Leite and I'm the Deputy Head Pastoral here at Sidcott School. Um, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to all our students for their contribution to the open morning today. So never has pastoral care been so important as it is now and I'm delighted to say we already have very strong systems in place to support the pastoral needs of all our students at school. So what does that actually look like? Well, we have our tutors. The tutor will become a really important person in the life of your child and for you as well as they are always going to be your first port of call. The students are very lucky because we have lots of tutor time throughout the week and they will meet with their tutors at least twice a day, um, initially for registrations but also for extended tutor times where they'll have an opportunity to talk about all sorts of things and just share where they're at um, at the moment in school. Um, they'll also have some PSHE sessions with their tutors every week as well and um, they, if you ever have a query or a problem and you want to just find out an answer to someone, the tutor is the person that you need to contact. So as well as our tutors, we have our heads of year and our deputy heads of year, and they oversee everything that's going on in the year groups and the forms that they look after. 
The heads of years love celebrating success and they will find every opportunity they can in assemblies or popping into tutor groups um, just to celebrate with the students all the good things that have been going on. That may, be, that may be good work or it may be attendance or it may be contribution to school life. We also have an assistant head pastoral care and she looks after the mental health and well-being and she works tirelessly to support all our students who might just need that little bit of extra support. Um, she's there for the year heads as well as the tutors and the students know that she always has an open door and can go and see and they can go and see um, our assistant head of pastoral care and well-being whenever they feel they need to. We also have our Take 10 mentors. So these are people that are available every lunchtime for anyone who might just want to go and pop in and just discuss a problem or talk about something um, out of the way of everybody else in the classroom or in the day-to-day -day school life. Our health centre, we are very lucky in the health centre, we have four wonderful nurses and their door is also always open and they're always happy to make a cup of tea, sit a child down and talk to them whenever they need anything, as well as obviously looking after their medical needs. We're fortunate enough to have a school counsellor and our school counsellor is in school three days a week. And again, she is there for those students who just need a little bit of extra specialist um, care and support throughout the week. So as well as everything else that I do, I am very lucky and fortunate because I get to oversee what's going on in boarding. And boarding is something that I'm really truly passionate about having worked in a boarding school for so many years. We have several options to, uh, for our boarders. One will be the full-time boarding, we have our weekly boarders, and we also have our flexi boarders. For those of you who'd like to find out a little bit more about boarding, please do join us in our boarding breakout session at 11 o'clock. For those of you who um, aren't planning on joining that session, just to say, you may be listening in as a day family thinking boarding has nothing to do with me but the options are so wonderful and if your child ever wanted to come in and just have a taster or experience boarding or do a couple of days um, every week it's a really good thing to get them used to a bit of independence they can use the school facilities throughout the evening for studying they can use the sports facilities and it just gives them a little bit of a taste of what life is like when you're not living at home so great preparation for university as well. We are very aware that for anyone starting a new school, it can potentially be very challenging and very difficult. So we do all we can to ensure smooth transition, whether that's into the third form or it might be into the sixth form or another year group. And also for our boarders who are having to move away from home and some of them who come a really long way. So transition in the third form, you will have lots of contact with the uh, tutors beforehand and also your child will be invited in to come and spend some days into school so that they can get a taste or an idea of what life is going to be like when they join us at Sidcot. We'll also have an induction day for our sixth form at the start of a school year and again that gives them an insight as to what life is going to be like as they move into a different stage of their education. The boarders also have a very thorough induction again as I've said for them it's a huge challenge they're a long way from home and we need to do all we can to make them feel as settled and as happy as quickly as we can and our boarding staff do work tireless, tirelessly to make sure that that happens. We would really encourage all our students here at SIGCOT to get involved as much as they can in the school life. We have a fantastic co-curricular programme which enables the students to get involved in sport, art, drama, DOV, just to name a few. So again, it's really important as well for our students who are coming in new because it's a great way to make new friends and to get to know people outside of the classroom. So I've given you lots of information about how pastoral uh, care works at school today and about all the other things that we have in place in our co-curricular programme and boarding. If you do have any queries, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. And I would say for anyone starting SIGCOT School, if you ever have any problems, queries or questions, please do get in touch with us because there are always people around who are happy to help. And in fact, we want to help. We want to make this as a happy experience for your children as we possibly can. And now I'm going to hand over to some of our parents who are going to give you some more information. Thank you. Honestly talking, I didn't choose this school for, by myself. My son chose it. We had a gut feeling that it was the right place. It felt right. The surrounding countryside, the area to play, to run in. Sidcot's concern was to build the person and then the education would follow on from them being a, a rounded individual rather than worrying too much about exam results and everything else. We'd looked around um, a lot of other schools 
The thing that bothered me, a, a couple of them, was that the teachers only spoke to me. But that was completely the opposite at SICOT. One, one of the great things for me is the way that the teachers engage with the children. They clearly know who's, who's the teacher and who's the child, but the conversations and the language is much more on a one-to-one -one peer relationship basis. What I, what I saw is, in SICOT, I saw that kids are relaxed. They're not driven to learn, they're not, it's not a demand to learn, they're inspired to learn. When they had their taste days, they just came home literally bouncing off the walls. We couldn't get him out. Yeah, he was already, can I stay at the school now? I want to start the school now. He came running out and um, just said, this is my kind of place. You know, these, these are my people. Oh, settling in at Sidcot was amazing. We are from Romania. Sitcot made my my child to feel com to feel comfortable, like staying home in a in a boarding and also uh, going to the school. Soon as he came there, he made very easy friends from Japan, from Qatar, from from Germany, from from all over the world. Socializing and mixing with both girls and boys. Um, whilst at his old school, it was very much just about being with the boys, but actually it's much more um, mixed, which is fantastic. His ability to interact with everyone from sixth form children down to the other 11 year olds was, was incredible. My son started Sikot this year. He's away for the whole week. So he comes home at weekends. Being at Sikot and boarding, uh, definitely has helped Ollie become more independent. The boarding house staff will occasionally write and you know, give us an update or, or tell us something that's, that the kids have done well. So that's always been it's encouraging. It's almost teaching us as parents to let go better. I think that's almost where the lesson comes. The children get on with it. People is, are the most important uh, thing in uh, in the school. Not only the equipment and all, not only the landscape and not, but the people made the made the school. About three weeks into our youngest being there, we asked, how's the day? Oh, great. At Sidcot School Council. I was like, School Council what? They wanted to be on School Council and was going to the meetings and enjoying it. One of the things that, um, that really surprised me um, when we first looked around Sidcot, you know, how good the performing arts facilities are. Um, they've got a brilliant little theatre uh, and they make the best use of, of the creative space. How quickly they gelled with their teachers. I don't remember gelling with my teachers very much in year seven, maybe because I was in a much bigger class size, but the fact that they, they kind of have their interaction. The payback in terms of the children's responsiveness and happiness is, I hadn't, I hadn't counted on that. So the surprise has been, how well the children have reacted to it and how positive feedback they're getting from, from, from the school and their engagement and enjoyment from the daytime. So I think the standout thing is is the ethos. The theory of building a person and getting the right character, I think is much more important than just heading, heading for exam grades. You don't feel the pressure. And you have also opportunity if you don't, if you are not keen in geography and you maybe you felt that you, it's not your 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 target, you got, you can choose. You have option to choose another another object. So this is also very very interesting. The teachers teach them in a way that they can really learn. They really understand. It's so different from a child just going through the motions of school to actually thrive. It, it's just wonderful to see. There's not a huge amounts of pressure piled on top of the kids so they you know they have homework every night but it's very it seems very very manageable the pupils and kids that go there get to look at the border things in life not just thinking about it but doing things and caring and well it, it's the quaker values i do love those as well if you're thinking about sending your, your child here, first thing is get them on a taste of day. Once you've done it, you, you won't go back. Moving to a new school gave them a chance to reinvent themselves and be themselves and who they wanted to be. It's not just about the teaching, which of course is, is really important, but it's also about um, developing actual nice human beings. If you're gonna send a, a, a child boarding, I think you know, it's the, you know, you'll feel as a parent, you feel nervous, you're letting them go. You're kind of, you know, should you kick them out of the house at this age, effectively, because they are much younger than you would expect to do that. But I think what you're actually getting out of it is kind of a, a more social environment for them. You know, they get to go into another family. I feel safe that I sent my kids abroad. I feel safe that I, I sent my kid to study in Sitcot. 
there are children get the bus uh, out to, to Sikot and, uh, and for most people they go, crikey, that adds an extra 45 minutes each day. How do your children cope with it? They love the bus. It's a community for them. So they're almost getting up in the morning early, willing to get on the bus. And so they come home just so engaged and happy when they get home as well. It's really into sport. He said he was very interested to see the sports facilities at Sidcot and meet the sports staff and the teachers. Just great and really inspiring. But the one that's probably the best example is fencing. Fencing has never, thing, never been a thing in our family. No one in our family's ever fenced and then ended up um, fencing in the national championships. That kind of nurturing of a, an idea that a child has and an inspiration is, has been really good. Learning. They just love to learn. They love their teachers. They love their classes. Um, they have a great group of friends and they're inspired to learn. I think they enjoy being inspired to learn. Thank you very much for joining us for this online open event. I hope you've learned a little bit more about SIGCOT. Uh, I hope you've liked what you've seen, and more importantly, you've liked who you've met. Don't forget to go to the breakout sessions, and the way to, to access them is through the link that's already been sent to you. I also hope this will start a conversation. So if you have any more inquiries or any more information that you'd like to find out, please do get in touch with our admissions team and the way to do so is in the information that we will leave at the end. So all it's, it remains for me to say is thank you again for coming, do stay safe and well, and I look forward to welcoming you in person very soon here at SIDCOT.